Hey guys, Level Cap here, and week three of Battlefest is underway, which means a new weapon, the Trench Carbine, is available to unlock in Battlefield 5. This is the semi-automatic or even convertible into a fully automatic small pistol carbine for the recon class. And it's technically the second pistol carbine available for the recon class, with the P08 being the first. But there are a few nuanced differences between these two weapons, although they are very, very similar in many ways. Now, first of all, if you want to unlock the weapon right now, you can complete the Battlefest assignments this week and get the gun for free, or you can wait a couple weeks and then it'll be available in the armory for company coin. The assignments themselves, in my opinion, are quite easy. If you go down the middle path, you shouldn't have too much trouble getting it. The first assignment on the list is just to get 7,500 objective scores. So that means capturing objectives, defending objectives, getting kills while on objectives. It's not too hard to do this. It might take you a game or two. And then basically the rest of it is just getting kills, dealing damage, reviving, healing, that kind of stuff. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do in just about any game mode. And the playlist this week uh, allows you to do that as well. It's gonna cycle through some mostly infantry oriented conquest maps with lots of objective play that you can get onto pretty quickly. So the playlist is pretty decent for a, uh, completing this assignment list. Now, once you unlock the trench carbine for the recon class and equip it, you're gonna have to grind through the first few levels before I feel that this gun becomes more usable. In its base state, it's not particularly enjoyable. It suffers accuracy issues, ADS issues, weapon swap issues, all that kind of stuff is not particularly enjoyable right at the start. Um, I would recommend, however, switching to one of the magnified optics. Either the two times or the three times seems to be the most usable with this weapon. You're gonna have to get some headshots in there to lower the TTK of this gun a little bit. It is a three shot kill in extreme close quarters with 36 max damage, but as you push that range out, it turns into a four shot kill, and I believe it even might go down to a five shot kill at further distances. Now, one of the coolest features of this gun is that through the specialization tree, you can turn it into a fully automatic weapon. Now, it's not going to increase the rate of fire. The maximum rate of fire is 360, and once you convert it to full auto, it'll just be shooting at that perfect 360 round per minute rate of fire. Uh, so if you are incredibly good at firing this weapon in semi-auto, uh, by just spam firing as quickly as possible and you don't have a problem with that, then this upgrade might not be as useful for you. I found it particularly useful though because since you spam click on the mouse uh, really fast, it can affect your aim a little bit. And so I find holding down in many situations to be a lot easier. And so once I got the full auto upgrade, I felt like this gun was really coming into its own. I went for the full right side specialization tree. I feel like that gives you the most benefits. It allows you to dance back and forth a little bit faster while aiming down sights. And uh, it gives you the full auto upgrade. It gives you a little bit better accuracy. Um, the, the left side tree is good for hip fire accuracy, which is not to be sort of negated with this gun. You want to hip fire a lot with this gun, but I feel that the hip fire itself is actually good enough for most situations. If you could somehow combine the hip fire uh, upgrades and the full auto upgrades, that might be the best of both worlds. But unfortunately, the uh, uh, upgrade tree doesn't allow you to do this. So just to save you guys a little bit of time and a little bit of grief, if you see an enemy in close quarters, hip fire them down. It's a three shot kill in close quarters. You basically only got to tag him three times, especially with a 36 damage maximum. Even if you hit him in the leg or something like that, it should still be a three shot kill which is nice, it's aggressive, it can hold its own against a lot of SMGs in the game. Not all of them though, and you're gonna find yourself going up against a lot of Tommy guns and Suomis that are gonna still be damaging you down both in close quarters and even at medium range. Now speaking of medium range, the thing that really surprised me about first picking up this weapon is that it's just not that effective at medium range. I mean, it's decent, especially once you get the full auto upgrade. It's not too bad, but if you're going up against players, returning fire, expecting you to peek a corner, uh, decent accuracy, it's not gonna win those firefights. You're gonna lose to full auto assault rifles, you're gonna lose to full auto SMGs, you're gonna lose to full auto LMGs. It can basically go toe to toe with many of them, but is a little bit undermatched. 
The benefit with this gun is the massive magazine and the damage per shot. 41 rounds per magazine, three shot kill in close quarters, four shot kill at medium range. You can do a lot of damage with a single magazine. It's also got a decently fast reload also, so it's not really an issue. But if you're a good flanker, if you're the kind of player that gets the first shot off or the first hit into your enemy, you're probably gonna win a lot of those firefights. And if you come around on a flank or you come into a building, well, you got enough ammo in your magazine to kill four enemies without needing to reload. I mean, it's really got some serious damage potential there, which makes it an excellent flanker weapon, an excellent sort of skulker weapon if you're trying to move around and not get shot at or trying to sneak up on people. It's just got so much damage potential. Also, with the recon class, you can go between the sniper perk or the Pathfinder perk, which will allow you to spawn on spawn beacons around the map, which is very useful on Conquest games where you got a bunch of other recon players putting beacons around. You can use that ability to start spawning around and getting those flanks more regularly. Again, the real power of this weapon is comes with the flanks sneaking up behind enemies and having enough ammo to actually kill an entire squad. As people start to figure out where the fire's coming from or where their teammates are coming from, you're not stuck in a reload about to get gunned down. You've still got ammo left and you're ready to take those players out. Now, I think guns like this in particular, and there's a bunch more in Battlefield 5 that I would brand as noob killer weapons, have some of the most inconsistent reviews. And that's because if you do flank a lot or you have a game where you're up against a lot of mediocre players, these guns can seem godlike, right? Because you're just going to be killing player after player after player because you're going to have enough ammo in your magazine and enough mediocre players to just absolutely dominate. And so I see a lot of reviews that I would maybe not necessarily totally agree with when regarding noob killer weapons. And there's a bunch of other ones in Battlefield 5 that just have a lot of damage potential, but really when it comes down to a 1v1, they're some of the worst guns in the game. Um, but people like them because if you're a good player or a decent enough player to outmatch most people you run into, well then you can kill them and then the guy behind them and then the guy behind them without needing to reload. You just gotta watch out for the fact that these guns are actually, from a statistical standpoint, not that effective when put up against most other weapons in their game and an equally matched skillful player. They're just really good in the damage potential. And that's something that you have to take into account and recognize uh, when playing. Because if somebody's like, oh my god, dude, you gotta try out this gun, it's the best gun in the game, blah blah blah, and you try it out and all of a sudden you're getting your butt kicked by a lot of decent players that uh, are just out damaging you in every single firefight, you're gonna be thinking like, what the heck were they talking about? And well, it really depends. The scenario, the situation you're in is going to drastically affect the performance of this weapon. Now at long range, I would absolutely not recommend this gun. The muzzle velocity is very slow, so moving targets are gonna literally literally be able to dodge your bullets and the accuracy frankly at the extreme ranges is just not very impressive at all so you might be thinking well i can just headshot them down well maybe not the accuracy really does suck at those further ranges so this is a close to medium range weapon which is fine because obviously the recon class has some of the best long range weapons in the game and so this is a good fun aggressive weapon to mix things up with. And I'm glad it's for the recon class. Um, because the PO8 does exist in the game, it makes this a little bit less interesting. Um, it's sort of like a full auto version of the PO8 with a slightly larger magazine and I'm guessing some accuracy penalties. Now I didn't have the, the full stats in front of me to compare both weapons. Uh, against each other, but I felt like the PO8 might have been a more accurate weapon, at least when standing still or ADSing or something. Um, and so that might be the trade off is maybe a slightly less accurate version of the PO8 with a larger mag and the ability to go full auto. But Again, I'd, I'd need to dig into the stats to confirm that 100%. Anyway, this is absolutely a gun I would recommend unlocking. It gives you some versatility with the recon class, and especially if you're a player who maybe doesn't like sniping or doesn't like bolt action rifles as much, this will give you a great alternative way to play the recon class, especially with the Pathfinder perk. You can get very sneaky, uh, very aggressive, do some building clearing, all that kind of stuff. It's quite fun with this gun. So. Grab it, unlock it, try it out. Let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.